Hi, Peter here, and in this blog I'd like to talk about a model of the mind that I find really useful for meditation. Of course, the mind is a very complex thing, and psychologists have enormous complex models of the mind, but I like models which are practical and that help us get further in whatever we're trying to do in life, whether that's overcome emotions or whatever. In my case, it's to get further in meditation. Now, we all know that we have a conscious mind and an unconscious, or some people call subconscious mind, which is a mind going on. And we team, seem to think because our conscious mind evolves only over one thought at a time, although very fast, sometimes it seems like you're thinking about two or three things at once, but in fact, your mind is going from one thought quickly to another thought and then back. So it seems like there's two thoughts. We seem to think because of this continuous stream of our thoughts that that is the way our mind works, that we have this continuous operation and train of one thought after the other and it just works very, very, very quickly. However, have you ever thought to imagine that the mind is also in control of different parts of our body. It controls our heart and our lungs and all the functions of our body. It's also uh, in control of our awareness. So if something dangerous comes up into our awareness, it alerts us and it's in control of so many different things. Well, this is what we call the unconscious mind. And the unconscious mind isn't just like one mind also doing a, a different track. The unconscious mind is made up of literally hundreds of little sub-minds all specialized in their own one area. There might be a particular you know, sub-mind which controls the liver and another sub-mind which controls um, our emotional states. One sub-mind for anger maybe, one sub-mind for judgment, one sub-mind for self-talk, that sort of thing. And the reason I find this very, very useful as a model is to understand how uh, we get stressed and how we can overcome stress. You see, what happens with these various sub-minds is sometimes they get into conflict. And you all know the feeling of wanting to go out with a certain person, but knowing that you should really go out with somebody else, or wanting to stay out late, but knowing that you should uh, go to bed early because you've got a big day tomorrow, or you want to eat this particular dish, but another part of your mind uh, doesn't want you to eat that. So all of these are various conflicts, and there can be a conflict between the conscious mind and the unconscious, or there can be conflicts between the various unconscious minds. Now, the process of meditation actually brings unification to all the different minds, including unification of the uh, conscious mind working in alignment with the unconscious mind, but also at a deeper level, all the unconscious minds working in synchronicity. And this is what leads to a sense of peace and a sense of flow. Because what happens is uh, when these sub-minds are in conflict with each other, that is where the stress lies. Now, you could be, some, you could be doing something completely uh, inefficient and wrong, and it could be even bringing harm on you later uh, in, in time, but if all your minds are happy, then you'll feel like you're in flow. Uh, a good example of this is like when you're in love. You are blinded by, sometimes people would say, you're blinded by the defects of the other person because your whole mind has one goal of uh, trying to please this person that you've fallen deeply in love with. Um, and so that is an example of a state of flow in which you can get in during meditation when there's this state of unification of the mind. So, as a uh, contrary, I believe that all stress is, and there's a big statement, all stress is ultimately um, because of these conflicts within the mind. Now, the analogy which uh, the Buddhist people use 
uh, is if you imagine a, a whole lot of horses that are tied up and if they're all going in different directions they're all pulling on each other one way or the other way and of course you're not going to go very far in life with all the horses pulling in different directions and gradually through meditation as we purify each submind, as issues come up in our meditation and we gradually see the wisdom and uh, sort of bring that submind into more alignment with the whole of the mind, we gradually get all these horses pulling in the right direction. And once they're all pulling in the right direction, you can imagine you have a much more powerful mind that also is a lot less bumpy and jerkly and, and goes with a great amount of flow. So contemplate when you think about your mind and you think about when you're in a stressful situation think about those conflicts within your mind and consider that if you are practicing meditation and wanting to move forward with your meditation practice okay hope you enjoyed that little chat about a particular mind model which i find very useful